Hello, Mike here. Welcome back to the railway. I'm not going to do work on uh, the railway layout today. I'm going to talk about class 31s. These are Lima ones. Bought these in auction. The reason I bought them was I wanted to get hold of this nice, um, I think they call it ochre. It's a, a pale brown, orangey brown colour. It's quite a nice one. Um, it's got issues by the looks of it. There's no couplings on it. It looks as though the couplings have been cut off the bogies. Um, this one had the same treatment. Bogies um, have had the couplings cut off. I know they they do have horrible couplings on the Lima Locos and they do stick out a bit but um, you can't pull anything with that because it's got no couplings. This one's the same. This is the um, 5818 loco. This is quite a nice one. Um, this one I think has been in a display cabinet. Um, it's got no couplings on it. And it's got all the fixtures and fittings on, on, on the front of the loco. So what I'll do is I'll get one or two of these out of the boxes. And we'll chat a bit further about what I'm going to do with them. One of these locos is a um, special edition. This is number 349 of 550 produced for Traction magazine. Um, didn't know anything about that. Um, and it's got rails of Sheffield on this certificate. So year of manufacture 2000. So that's been about for a little while. That is this green one. D5528 31110 new number um, that's had the bogies cut off as well I think we can probably put that right I don't think that'll be a problem this one has obviously been in somebody's display cabinet it doesn't look as if it's ever been run and it's had all the fixtures and fittings put on the front. Um, white roof. That that might have been the one that ran out of Stratford depot that pulled the Royal Trains. Royal Train diesels usually have a white roof. It's got a head code one X zero zero on both ends. Um, so I'll probably just stick that in the display cabinet. This one I'm quite interested in. I'm going to sort out the bogies because there's no couplings on there. They've been cut off. Um, this is D5579. I'm going to convert this to digital and I'm going to pull the motor out and I'm going to put a CD uh, motor in there and we'll see how we get on. So the basis of the rest of this uh, video will be about this loco and converting it to DCC and um, I've got a little kit coming to convert this uh, little CD motor and uh, we'll see how we get on so I'll get everything set up and I'll get back to you uh, when we got organized right first things first we got to get the body off this old loco they're just a little clip fitting that they're not too hard to get off. One or two of them can be a bit fiddly. There we go. Put that out of the way. We don't need that for a minute. Right, you'll find with some locals, I don't know if this is a standard piece of Lima kit or whether it's somebody's bodge, but it's a very sharp edged piece of metal and it's very, very heavy. Um, to get rid of that what I do with those is I file down all the edges so they're not sharp and uh, I usually cover them with some tape so when we put it back together we put a, a decent one in there right what you need for this job is a new or one acquired from a scrap loco 
bogey trailer. This is trailing bogey with a coupling on it. This is the other bogey. This is the motor bogey with the two little screws to uh, hold that all together. A little eight pin socket to plug your chip into. A chip of your choice, whatever you want to use. This one's a Digitrax one. A CD motor. I'll put a link or um, details below the video where you can get these. And I've got a little drive cog to put on the end of the motor and a bit of each shrink that came with the kit, but I've always got each shrink anyway. And some tools and a soldering iron. Right, first job is to get the motor out. So what we do is pull that disconnecting clip off there and you'll see that this little uh, trailing axle's got another pickup in it. So we've got to desolder that from the motor. If the uh, soldering iron is ready, we'll carry on with that. Excuse my hand in the way. That's one piece. Sometimes these come off straight away, sometimes they're a bit of a struggle. This is the uh, offending bogey with um, wheels but no coupling. So we're going to replace that. Right, we've got to get the motor out. Get the motor out. There's uh, two screws. Find a uh, screwdriver. They're a bit fiddly. I'm actually using the wrong screwdriver here. But there you go. Lift that off and then it's just a little wiggle and the motor will come out. Right, next job is to take this um, whole lot to pieces. Um, if you're not sure how where everything goes back together best take a photograph of this before you uh, take it apart because there's several little uh, cogs on here there's one two th three four five six little cogs on there but um, what I'll do is I'll take all this apart now and we'll see what happens first thing is we've got to get rid of another wire here So we get the soldering iron and just see if we can wrangle this one up here. Right. Then we can uh, hopefully take, take, take all this to pieces. tray to put all the bits and pieces in so we don't lose them. You want to keep all these because you might want to put the thing back together at some point and take the CD motor out. Take the plate off. You'll find there's a couple of springs and there should be a couple of uh, brushes. There they are. 
oh they're in good condition you can, you can see the, uh, the the armature's quite dirty but you'll find with these springs they fly all over the place yeah there's one disappeared already they're um, they're quite uh, renowned for flying out of the way right underneath we've got a little contact strip which contacts on the two outer axles if we can um, get that little rascal out of there now we should be able to uh, get the magnet out of here now some of these can be a, a bit reluctant to come out ah that one's come out okay now there's a big ring field magnet in here This can be a bit of a pain in the backside to get out. Ah, yes, this one obviously comes out from the bottom. So we need to take the centre axle off. Um, and find the necessary e equipment. They can be a bit of a beast to get off these. You just have to. There we go. That's come off with the axle. Now that allows you to get in here. And pull the. Uh, pull the magnet out hopefully there you go don't need that and what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take off the uh, all the cogs and then um, just give this a clean and uh, hopefully the new CD motor will fit in there sometimes you just have to trim just a wee bit off the bottom for them to fit in there this one actually fit this conversion um, kit fits nicely so uh, what I'll do is I'll just give this a clean and I'll come back to you in a minute I've now cleaned this out where the motor is going to fit and prepared the motor ready to pop in. I've tested this motor to make sure it runs. You can do it with, uh, just give it a brief run with a battery. That'll uh, sort that. Now then, <clears throat> there's a wee little cog goes on here to re replace the one that is fitted on the uh, original armature. If I get this one, you'll see there was a little. There's a little drive cog on the end of the armature shaft. I've fitted a new one onto this motor. They come with the motor. In some cases, depending who you get this motor from, they'll already be fitted. If you get one that's not fitted, it's quite possible that the uh, little cog will be too long if I should put one in my hand there you see that's too long what you do is push it on and then trim it off because if it's too long this won't fit in the motor housing so the next job there's a little hole in the top 
the next job is to feed your ways through that hopefully and you've got to get this in without trapping the wires and with a bit of a with a bit of a push like so that will go in there now before you screw that up you just want to test that if you twist these and they twist the other ones you know that that's locked in with the uh, little cog on the end of the motor so that's good next job we've got to uh, screw that back up the wee screws back in there Just check that's all going. Yeah, that's nice. That just uh, that might just need a, a wee drop of lubrication, but not much. Don't over lubricate your motors. It causes more trouble than it than it's worth. You want lubrication to be just like on the end of a pin. A very small amount of lubrication. Right. Next job is we got another piece here somewhere. This piece with a little bit of wire on it has got to go back in here. There's a little peg there where that where the, where that fits in the middle. So you've got to got to get that in as well. So you just put a little. These two little cogs back. It's a little bit fiddly, but it's not a not a big issue. I get my big thumb out of the way. Right there on. And I've cleaned these wheels, so we just clip those two outer ones in there. I say it is a bit fiddly. Just check as you're going along, give them a little turn, make sure everything's spinning round and you'll know you've got it located correctly. These are press fit in here and they, they, they can be a bit awkward. I've checked the gauge of these as well with a, a gauge to make sure the back-to-backs are uh, the, right, the right distance apart. Right, we put this little fella back in, the contact spring. I just clean these with a bit of uh, a drop of IPA on a A cotton bug just make sure we get a good contact because it's no good having a CD motor in there if you haven't got a good contact these are just a pressure contact
make sure that's in the right place. We we'll just give this another turn, make sure everything's working. Right. Then centre axle. Make sure you put it on the right way around. Get the uh, insulated wheel on the right side. Check that. I think so good. It's a wee, wee bit, um, wee bit too much. That. Yeah, I'll just, just got that a little bit too. Uh, A little bit too tight. go yeah if you don't get your back to back so right you'll you'll have trouble going over the points and junctions and stuff and final check yeah it's all good I won't lubricate it until uh, we get it all put back together right next job put this back in the chassis make sure we've got it the right way around don't want it that way do it that way And then this little piece with a coupling on fits on top like that. I say that a little bit fiddly, but it, it ain't rocket science. Do another check. Yeah, that's good. Now we need some lubrication. You only need a wee drop because as soon as the motor starts working, that'll uh, that'll distribute it all through. Right, so that's basically that end done.
now we've got to deal with the other end so this is the bogey that came off with a coupling mason so we've got to sort that out I've got another bogey frame here that's got a coupling on it so I'm going to take all the kit off this put it in this one and then I'll come back to you right now I've done a little bit more work I've got the thing all put back together the bogeys put back together I've extended the wires on the motor because they only come with about 75 mil of wire on them so that they need to be extended I've extended this one from the pickup and joined it to this one from the trailing uh, bogey pickup because they're both on the same side shorten this one we're going to use this to uh, plug in a chip so there's several tabs on here that you can solder to we're only concerned with the four outer tabs on each corner which is uh, motor left motor right track left and track right so first thing to do is just to put some solder on these tabs first of it I, I usually just put a wee spot of flux on there get a soldering iron just put a wee, a wee tab on there just make sure you don't short it out by putting uh, solder on the tabs that you don't need I'm going to put this um, in here um, I shall just hold that down with a bit of blue tack or a bit of white tack probably it's probably uh, something like that and then just stick that on there so the next job is to fix fix your wires and then the, the chip will just go in there So, track left and track right. Uh, so these four corner ones, one says motor R, track L, track R, and motor R. So there's two for motor, two for track. So this one is the left hand track. So we'll just um, atta attach that one to there. Just give it a second to take. Give it a little tug, make sure you've got a connection. And then the other track, which is a pick up from the bogey. Is this one just get a little solder on the on the tip of the soldering iron and try and get it where you can see it can be a bit fiddly but that's all that needs then the next one is the motor right which is 
this one. So we just just put a wee a wee drop on there. If you get these the wrong way around, all that happens is it'll it'll go the wrong way, and you have to change your wires over. Last one. It's a bit fiddly, but it all seems to work. Right, that's it. That should be done. Don't forget to put some shrink wrap over your joints. Keep the wires fairly long because you never know if you're going to need a little bit of extra wire. So that's basically it with the CD motor all in the chassis. What I'll do now is I'll, I'm going to program this chip before I put it in the loco on my chip tester and make sure that it works. So I'll do that and then be back in a jiffy. Right, program the chip. In this instance it's a Digitrax one. We've got to make sure we get it in the right way around. There's a little mark by under motor right, a little circle that denotes where pin one goes, which is the orange one. Just got to be careful you don't bend the pins when you put these little fellas in. There we are, we're in. Put the weight in. Now with a bit of luck, the body should fit on there. No guarantee this is going to work. Sometimes they don't work first time. Ah. Wires are uh, need to go down the side of the weight. That just there isn't the clearance to have the wires on top of the uh, weight. That is a flipping great weight in there. I'm not sure. I'm not sure they need such a big weight, but there you go. Right, we'll have another go. Aha. Uh -huh. Right. I'll put this on the rolling, rolling road, get that all rigged up, ready, and we'll, we'll have a test run and see, see if it works. Back in a jiffy. Right, we've got the uh, local all put back together and put on the uh, rolling road. So I'll just see if the actual thing go. Ah. Yeah, she goes. So that's all good. I'll just um, stop that and see if that goes in the other direction. It does. The thing with putting a chip in one of these is you'll have to mess about with the CVs depending on what type of chip you've got and what type of Greenfield motor it is. Um, to get the best results out of it. You probably have to play about with it a bit. But you want to keep the voltage down um, because basically there is a 6 volt motor of these little CD motors in this particular case, in the Coco ones. Uh, the little narrow motors uh, they are only 9 millimeters wide, the CD motors, and they uh, are low voltage. So you've got to keep your voltage down um, with uh, messing about with the CVs in your, in your chip. So that will sort it. While I've got this on the rolling road, I'm going to just turn this off. Um, that's my chip tester. 
Um, I use that to um, test chips and I sometimes program chips as well before I put them in the loco. So he's programming them on the track. Um, I've got um, a DC C track which uh, the class 31's on and then the one in front of it's a DC track for double O gauge and this little one here is a TT gauge for the uh, to test the locos for the DT uh, for the um, TT collection I've just bought. Anyway I hope that's uh, been of interest I'm sorry it's a bit of a long video I had a bit of an issue with the my regular movie camera so I've done the rest of the, this on the phone and it's the first time I've done them on the phone so uh, apologize for any uh, misdemeanors and um, hopefully I'll get back to you soon with uh, another interesting video. Bye for now.